Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here, and welcome to tutorial number 20. Now, in this tutorial, I want to start talking to you guys about loops. And there are a few different types of loops in JavaScript, so I should probably mention that in this video, I'm going to be specifically talking about the while loop. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what a loop is, then let me go ahead and explain. We as programmers are really lazy. We like to work smarter and not harder. And for that reason, we have loops. And what a loop does is it allows us to run a bit of code repeatedly as many times as we want without having to type that line of code out every time. So let's say, for example, I wanted to write something out on the screen 10 times. I could go ahead and be boring and type out uh, documents dot write if you're wow. OK, document dot write. And I could go ahead and type in whatever I wanted to write out like this is a sentence or something. And uh, I could go then and copy paste it or duplicate it 10 times and that would be fine. It would run 10 times, but that's not very smart. It's not very efficient. I've just wasted 10 lines of code in my text editor. Why would I want to go ahead and do that? So a much smarter way of doing things would be to use a loop, tell the loop to run 10 times, and then only put that line of code in once. OK, so like I said in this tutorial, we are speaking about the while loop. So let's go ahead and take a look at the syntax for a while loop. And then we can write something out on the screen 10 times using that loop. So a while loop kind of looks like this. OK, you have to type in the word while. That's why it's called a while loop. So while. And after that, we'll put in two parentheses and two curly braces, so like the opening and closing ones. And in between these curly braces, this is where all of our statements go, as in all of the code that we want to run. But inside these parentheses over here, this is where we will put a condition. And uh, basically, a lot like an if statement where you use a condition, to make sure that this code runs. We do that with a while loop as well. But the difference with a while loop is that this while loop will carry on running these statements over and over until this condition becomes false. So in other words, this loop is going to check this condition. And if it's true, run this code, then go back check the condition. If it's still true, run this code again. Check this condition again. Obviously, if it's still true, run it again. And it'll keep going until this condition is false, and then it'll just skip over and carry on or end the program. OK. So I should probably mention that every time a loop does that, every time it repeats and starts again, that is called an iteration. And that's something you're probably going to hear a lot uh, when working with loops. It's uh, spelled like that, iteration. OK? And that just means, or that's just the name for every time a loop repeats. OK? So here's the problem that you can kind of see straight away. What happens if this condition never evaluates to false? Well, that is called an infinite loop. And infinite loops are bad, OK? That's basically going to make your program like freeze and, and crash or whatever. And then the user is going to have to go ahead and push Alt, Cron, Alt, Control, and Delete to bring up Task Manager and close your program. That's like the only way it can be done. So just make sure that you never <laughs> have a condition that never evaluates to false. But I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So when using a loop to ensure that this condition will eventually evaluate to false, 
we have to use a variable to count how many times this loop runs okay and um, I'm gonna go ahead and create my variable here and I'll call it counter but a lot of people when working with a counter for a loop will usually name their variable something like i or j or k sometimes x or something like that but to keep this tutorial simple and so you guys understand I'm gonna call it counter and I'm gonna set that equal to 1 now this means that I'm starting to count my while loop at 1 the first time it runs that's 1 okay sometimes people start at 0 but just so this tutorial makes a little bit of sense I'm gonna start at 1 and you can also start at any other number you want but what would be the point when you start counting you either start at counting at 0 or 1 why would you start counting at something like 5 or 11 but yeah it's up to you okay so now we need to make sure that this condition over here involves our counter so let's say I wanted our loop to run 10 times well then I'd have to make sure that while counter is less than or equal to 10 then we'll go ahead and we'll run these statements okay and let's say uh, we wanted to write something out on the screen then we can go ahead and just put that there instead of a statement comment document dot write and what do we want to write we'll just write this is paragraph and I'm going to make use of my counter variable here so I'll concatenate that on the end and I'm, I'm gonna make sure that this is all in paragraph tags just to make sure that every time this runs it'll appear on a new line and if you guys don't know what I'm doing with these plus symbols over here go back and watch my tutorial on strings and you'll know that this is called concatenation and then you'll be good to go for this video so uh, now what we need to do is I've left out something very important and that is to increase our counter okay so to do that we can go ahead and just say counter plus plus and that means counter plus one okay so now what happens when we will run this program in Firefox is we're gonna start counting or we're gonna create this variable called counter and we're gonna start counting at one then we're gonna get to this loop and it's gonna go well one is less than or equal to 10 then write this out on the screen and because one is less than or equal to 10 this is gonna go ahead and execute and it'll write this is paragraph one okay then we're gonna increase counter by one so now counter is equal to two then we're gonna go back here and check this condition again while two is less than or equal to ten do this so we're gonna go ahead and do that again and it'll write this is paragraph two then we're gonna increase counter by one again so that means that counter is now equal to 3 and obviously 3 is still less than 10 so this is going to carry on going until eventually we get to 10 so while 10 is less than or equal to 10 well that's still true so it'll run again and then it's going to increase to 11 and 11 is not less than or equal to 10 so that means that this condition over here is now false and this code will not run and uh, that's the end of our program so it'll just stop right there it's gonna print out 10 lines of code or 10 lines of uh, this onto the screen and then it's gonna stop okay so let's go ahead and save this and then run this in Firefox and see what happens cool so we've got our 10 paragraphs print printed out on the screen this is paragraph 1 2 3 etc uh, which is exactly what I told you guys would happen so let's go back and recap for just a minute okay what we did was we decided we wanted to use a while loop and we wanted to run something 
10 times. But in order for this while loop to run 10 times, we had to keep track of this while loop. So what we did was we created this counter variable to count how many times our loop runs. Then we made sure that our condition over here makes sure that this loop runs 10 times and only 10 times. Once we get to 11, that's too many. Okay. And, uh, the way we had to do that was we had to keep counting our loop every time it ran. So we started at one. Then once our loop had run once, the counter increased to two. And then it increased again every time this while loop ran or got executed. Okay. So that's basically just what you guys have to do when using a while loop. You just need to make sure that your condition will eventually evaluate to false. So you make sure you use a counter and then make sure to increase your counter inside of the loop. If we went ahead and we put this code outside of the loop, then counter would never increase and this loop would carry on going. It would be an infinite loop basically. And then we'd have to push uh, alt control delete and end the program because we'd make our program or our computer freeze. So just make sure that you guys never do that. And uh, that's actually all I have for you guys in this video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment. And if you guys found this video helpful, then click that like button below. It's really going to help my channel grow. And I'm rhyming right now. So that's really awesome. <laughs> kind of ended it but uh, yeah I'm a poet and I don't know it so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time